Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Visit www.audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge today. My name is Fred Cap. I am the host of the Teacher Recharge podcast, and I am not a big fan of squid. I think it's too chewy. Anyways, let's get the podcast going. What up, what up, what up? I'm so charged up for this week. I hope you are too. It's a Monday. You're alive. Another week, another opportunity. I'm Fred Kep. I'm the host of the Teacher Recharge Podcast. And this week, I get called by my full name in this interview because I have my mom, Kelly Kep, as the guest. Why would I have my mom on? Well, I'm glad you asked because she is extremely experienced in this. She has 28 years of experience in education in some form or fashion. She's helped kids get to college. She's helped kids get jobs. She's helped kids succeed on every level from young all the way to, to college and high school. I mean, she is one of the most inspirational people I know. She's awesome. You're going to love this interview. Right now, though, she is a SPED teacher at Bowie Middle School in Odessa, Texas. That's my hometown. And she's been a certified teacher in that area for six years. So she's going to share some wisdom today. It's a great interview. Like I said, this will make your Monday great content. Probably one of the best interviews that we have done thus far. So without further ado, let's get to it. Enjoy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Teacher Recharge. Today, we have someone that is very dear to my heart. She's breaking a couple records. She's actually the first person on the show ever that's related to me. So that's number one. And then number two, she's actually the first middle school teacher that we have ever had on the show as well. So please welcome my mother, Kelly Kep. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I I sense sassiness in your voice. I feel like I always sense that. I want that's probably where I get it from. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's it's awesome to have you on the show. I've I've been really wanting to get you on here because you have been in education in some form or fashion for 28 years, right? 28 years? In one way or another, that's yeah. right. Awesome. And uh, what do you do right now? So right now I'm a self-contained special education teacher at a middle school with 6th, 7th, and 8th graders ranging from Down syndrome and autism and just general orneriness for some of them. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, let's start the interview with the same question we start every interview with, and that is, what do you do at the beginning of your week? Do you have any rituals that start your week off correctly? How do you start your Mondays? How do I start my Mondays? Now, Roland Frederick, you know me. My ritual for a Monday morning is the same as every other day. You got to get up. That's yeah. it. Yep. Got to get up. And... uh is there anything you do to stay on time and stuff? I know that when I was in school, one of your morning rituals was getting me out of bed because <laughs> I have a yep. hard time with the and whole so, getting up thing. Yeah, there's the getting up and a time on time, huh? Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. So when my contract started at 820, we had to be at school by 810. Now, this year, the contract starts at like 8.25, 8.30, and we don't have to be there till about 8.15. So this year, I'm there by 8.10. Oh, yeah. I see I was you. not there by 8.10 last year. I was there by about 8.15. Yeah. So this year, I'm on time for last year. I'm not good at the on-time thing. I'll be honest. Oh, uh, well, I just learned but where I'm I better. get it from, too. <laughs> you, grow in, you grow into it. By the time you're in your 50s, you start to get more on time. Oh, yeah, I hope so. Emma, <laughs> call, Emma calls me a late person. Go. There's two types of people. That's what she says. There's there's people that are on time and there's people that are late. 
Oh, I apparently I'm a late person, which, you uh, know, I, and I, I read that smart people are late and disorganized. And so, right, there you go. yes, that's I also read that smart people are sarcastic a lot, too. So, I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of characteristics that aren't necessarily helping me shine that I blame on being smart. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Getting up, that's definitely an important thing. I, I find that to be a really important part of the day as well. I feel like once, <laughs> to be honest, I, I feel like I am a morning person. In fact, I know I'm a morning person. I actually frustrate people at, at 5 a.m. practices because I'm so energetic. The getting up is the, is still the hard part. Like once I get up, I think I'm good. But getting up, I'm with you. once I get up, I'm like ready to take on the day. I'm like, I feel like Superman, but... To get up is is the hard is the hard part. So I I don't know if you if anybody out there has suggestions for me, send them in teacher recharge podcast at gmail dot com. I'd love to hear them because I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I'm a kep apparently. Next thing I want to ask though, what is something that you are doing that other teachers are not? That maybe someone could take something from from you today. Uh, what would you want to maybe suggest to them that you've seen that you do a little differently? So I'm a career changer. I'm not a lifelong educator as a certified teacher. I've, this is just my sixth year. By the time I got to this job, my give a button was broken. Having a give a button broken, does that make sense? Something like yeah, that. Yeah. It really relieves the stress of some of the stuff that as a 21-year-old brand new teacher, you just have so much stress all the time. And I was, I'm past that. I've already been through that with other positions and such. So that's one of the big differences I see. Another difference that, and I worry about this is I just finished getting a certif my certification for a principalship. T took a lot of classes, took the test, all that. Congrats on that, by the way. And one thing, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> lifelong learning. And one thing that has bothered me in the middle school. So, so much happens in middle school, whether the kid's got a disability or not. So much happens. Kids right. grow so much between sixth and eighth grade. It's crazy. Yeah. But I've had teachers tell me or make the statement, these kids don't deserve respect until they give it. And that's just not, to me, that's not the way to look at that age group. We want these young people to come in and develop into wonderful young adults who give to their community, who care for others, who do stuff on their own and are independent. So I feel that they deserve our respect and no preconceived notions. Give them respect. They'll respect you. And does that work with all of them? Absolutely not. Right, right. But we have to start somewhere and you, you can't expect a sixth grader that comes from who ever knows what background to have total respect for all the adults in their life. Right. And that includes teacher. You don't know where they're coming from. Right. So you have to figure that out first. So you have to respect them to trust you. Definitely. And so I, they respect you. And so I think that that's something that's really important. And in my role as a self-contained teacher, one thing I'm not going to do, I told a parent we had open house tonight. And one thing I'm not going to do is I told the parent, by the time they're done with their sixth grade year, I'm not going to be taking them to the potty. We might, of course, if they're of the type that are going to run from the school, we'll be with them. Mm -hmm. But they can do some of this stuff on their own. It's time for them to open their own milk carton. It's time for them to go to the toilet by themselves. It's time. You have to, I mean, regardless of disability, you've got to show that respect for that kid so the kid will have respect in themselves. I 100% so agree. I, I think it's interesting. Um, you, you mentioned like sixth through eighth graders are going through so, so much that to, to just say like, oh, well, they don't deserve this or they don't deserve our respect unless they give it to us. Like the first off, one thing I would say is that's just not the way communication works. Just like in the real world, that's not how that works, period. And isn't school to prepare our students and our, and our young people, young men and women for the world ahead. If, if you're teaching them that, you know what I mean? Like that's just like not how communication works. You definitely, everybody needs to respect everybody yeah. just 
equally. Like this is just how it goes. And if you don't, that's when consequences happen. Obviously, you are the teacher, so you're in the place of being an authority figure. But with that said, like I had one teacher once that I, I can't remember who it was, but she said, "I trust you unless you give me a reason not to trust you." Right. And I think that's I think that's okay, and I think that's that's actually a really good way because then you're saying, "Look, like." I'm not out here to fight you. I'm here to to help you with with this subject, or I'm here to just help you learn and, and yeah. become a better person and student. Especially with today's kids, that is sending a message of of we're looking towards a, a bigger picture here, which is really important. And then also, I just a little personal side note that I was thinking, like you talk about kids going through stuff in that age group. I mean, we're talking about you know bodily changes that are happening. We're talking about uh, bullying because kids yep. don't know who they are when they're that age, especially like, I mean, high school that I, I would still argue that they don't really know exactly who they are, but they have it a little more figured out. I think sixth through eighth grade with all of the bodily stuff happening and with all of the hormones going crazy, like kids just don't know who they are. And a lot of them put up that defense shield as some of them go into depression. Some of them put it up as, oh, I need to make someone else feel bad because I don't understand what's going on with me. First off, it's a shame to hear that some teachers would say something like that. But then also that is wonderful how you're you're going about looking at that situation and, and remedying it. I just exactly. think it's important that respect those around you. Exactly. And one other thing I wanted, before we go to the break, I, I wanted to just ask you, especially being in such a specialized sort of classroom that's, you know, self-contained and stuff, what is something that you failed at that you've learned from? Here's the thing in my room. I I hope actually happens in everybody's rooms. Mm-hmm. But not to the degree. In in my room, I will tell you, I make mistakes every single day. If I get hit in the classroom, I'm it's going through my head. What what did I do? What could I have done better? Because I have so many different kids with so many different behaviors that you could say one thing and as you go reflect, it's like, oh, I probably should have said that better. Or maybe I shouldn't have been so close to them and that wouldn't have happened. Or maybe if we would have done this taken this away earlier or started the year without this available to them and then brought it in instead of having to take it away. We wouldn't have this problem. So I'm having to do that every day. I mean, I, I've i had some great successes as a vocational rehab counselor where I did transition with students who came from this type of classroom their whole life into getting jobs. And then I've had places where it just saddened me that things didn't work the way they should have. And not all the time because of me, but because their parents couldn't let go or, you know, were sabotaging the child, the adult getting a job or, you know, and how could you handle that better? So I've had that, but I've also had successes in the fact that I had one young lady who I was doing transition with who had a hearing impairment. I mean, she was deaf with a cochlear implant whose parents said, she's disabled, she'll never be able to go to college. And I can tell you after tears and fights with the mom, and I was in a, you know, a different job, I was a state transition counselor at the time, that now I can say that that young lady has a de- bachelor's degree in art, is married to a sculptor, which I'm sure her mom is very proud of. <laughs> They're both mm-hmm. artists, starving yeah. artists. <laughs> but she also has an associate's degree in culinary arts. I mean, the girl went to college, right, not once, right, right. but twice, and is very successful. And that was really changing a parent's view of her child. Right. And so I just think that I can't pinpoint one one mistake because there's mm-hmm. so many. And I'll mm-hmm. say that. Okay. There's just mistakes, like I said, every single day. And every single day, I have to reflect on, okay, what could I do better tomorrow? I'm not misorganization. I know that. I'll say that. Same. But I do my best. I think I'm pretty good at what I do. Most parents that I deal with like me. Right. And the students like me. So the family tonight, the only family that came see me, because I see my parents almost every day. So when it comes to open house, they're like, yeah. eh, we're not. That family said, well, he doesn't complain about coming this year. Well, okay. 
<laughs> so I guess I'll take it. Fair enough. <laughs> take it as a compliment and go from there. Definitely. Take it where you can get it. All right. All right. Well, this is going to be a great opportunity for us to take a real small break, thank a sponsor, and then we will be right back with me mama. Thanks. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Now for you, the listeners of the Teacher Recharge podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day free trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now every single time I have a guest on the show, I ask them to kindly recommend a book. So, mother, what would be your recommendation? Okay, so recommendation. Number one, I have Audible. It's fabulous. Listen to it all the time. I've listened to like 12 Dean Koontz books. We're at the almost at the end of the Jane Hawk series, and I can tell you that those are great books. But Dean Koontz's book, which, Fred, you read this one, and one of the best books he ever has written, I think, is called By the Light of the Moon. Remember? Yes, definitely, I remember. And it's got to be the most awesome sci-fi thriller kind of book. And when Fred and his sister, the whole family, we read it and listened to it, I think everybody enjoyed it. So I would recommend, just for a fun sci-fi thriller, By the Light of the Moon by Dean Koops. I can second that recommendation. I love it. What a what a throwback, because we listened to that in the car on a trip. Yep. What, when, when, how old was I, like? It was, no, it, I'm just kidding. Six, no, it was <laughs> when we, I was up here for, I had just moved up here to, to Odessa. So y'all weren't even living in Odessa yet. So it was yeah. about 16 years ago. Wow. And I still remember yeah. that book, which is how good yeah. that is. So you should definitely read that. To download your free audiobook today, such as By the Light of the Moon by Dean Kuntz, you can just go to audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge. I got you with the hookup. It's going to give you a free 30-day free trial and that free audiobook. So go to audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge for your free audiobook today. And we are back in while well, I'm in the studio. I mean, I always do that. My goodness. Uh, we are back with my mother, my madre, mi mama, me. I, I don't know any other words for, oh my for mother, I guess. Mother, mother. <laughs> we are back with my mother. It is time for story time. It gets better every week. I'm telling you right now. I was going to clip it. Like I was going to like play the same clip, but man, my voice is just getting, mm. I mean, oh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> Pat on the back to me. Anyways, it is story time. Whenever I have a guest, I bring them in and I let them tell a story that can be motivational. It can be comedic. It can be off the cuff. It could be whatever they want. I give them the floor. It's up to them. But it is time for my mother's story time. So I give the floor to you. Okay, so I'm going to tell two things real quick. This, I listen to a lot of doctor radio, which is good or bad, whatever you want to think. But they were talking to a young man this morning who's a chemist, and he made a statement that I just kept repeating to myself so I would remember to say it. Because, like I said, I just finished all these classes in leadership, and I think everybody, if we want our children to be lifelong learners, we have to be lifelong learners. Right. And one thing he said was as he went into college, he wasn't – afraid of what he didn't know. And so I think that's important to know that you're going to go into something. He didn't know what he didn't know. So he wasn't afraid of it. So just remember that as you, as you make goals for yourself, if you want to continue your ed, or if you're afraid to do continuing ed, do it. Don't be afraid of what you don't know. And just go get it, go after it, because lifelong learning is so important. And I learned so much from my classes. That being said, let me tell you a quick story. It's a quick one. It's not a long one. So I have a, a room full of sixth through eighth graders, and they range from IQs of, well, as low as you can get to about 60 sometimes. And every once in a while, I'll have an autistic child in my room that has a normal IQ. 
so there's nothing wrong with his IQ. He just he has autism and some behavioral difficulties and goes to regular classes, but comes to me once a day, right, to check things out. Yeah. So I had one of these young men in my room who liked to cuss like a sailor. We did social skills with him, and he didn't think too much of that, as you might imagine. We talk politics all the time, and we won't get into that, but he thought the current situation's hilarious. He would talk about that all the time. And he was in my room, and he was doing a puzzle or something one morning, going through something, and the executive director of special ed comes into my room from administration, just to walk through in the school. And she walks over to the table. He's studying stuff and going through some stuff. And I don't know if he had counting tiles there or what. And I just hear it kind of out of the corner of my eye. I see this happening. She goes, oh, look at you. Can you tell me what color that is? And she pointed to one of the tiles. And he looked up at her like her head would have just exploded. And he goes, what's wrong with you? Don't you know your colors? <laughs> and to me, that just is like the ultimate in know who you're talking to, know <laughs> your students. Because he wasn't there to learn his colors by any means. The child was working on algebra, you know. Yeah. Um, he just, he wasn't one of the typical students in my classroom. He was, you know, a kid with some behavior issues with autism. So, right. yeah, that that's one of my fun stories. He just put that administrator, he didn't have any any problem telling her that she was crazy. Yeah. Basically, it's like, you don't know your colors? What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Well, we are a little, we are running low on time now. So where can people find you? I know you're doing a fundraiser. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure, I have on Donors Choose, Cooking for Myself, an Essential Independent Living Skill. And I'm trying to raise money to buy my kids the safe cooktops that are cool to the touch and some cooking equipment so we can do more than just bake stuff in an oven. Right, yeah. So they bake stuff in her classroom from time to time, but she's wanting to, is it once a week actually? Uh, once to six weeks. Once. A, okay, so, but she's wanting to obviously reach a little bit past the baking realm yeah. and go into some cool stuff. So actually that is donorschoose.org. Once again, donorschoose.org. If you look up Mrs. Kep with, that is K-O-E-P-P. Once again, K-O-E-P-P. If you don't know it, just look at the uh, logo for this podcast and it says with Fred Kep. It's that kind of, you spell it like that. K-O-E-P-P. -P. Put in Mrs. Kep and she'll be the number three thing that uh, on the pop down, on the drop down menu that comes up. It's Mrs. Kep from Bowie Middle School, Odessa, Texas. You click on that. I'm doing it as we speak, by the way. You can look down. It kind of gives you a, an overview of what she's doing so our classroom is in an old homemaking room with little to no equipment for learning independent living skills and she explains her her mission there if you click on cooking for myself an essential independent living skill it tells you even more about this tells you about the project and it also tells you exactly where your donation is actually going to go so if we could just shower her classroom with some love i would absolutely appreciate it i mean it gives you the option to just give however much you want doesn't it because it says it has sure. a little thing here i could i could put in one dollar which i mean come on don't be lame or and i could put in 50 or 60 dollars yep and as and for the next day or two if you put in the promo co code ripple r-i-p-p-l-e it will double oh sweet so i'm doing that right now then that's fan that's awesome. So yes, with the promo code Ripple, that is R I P P L E. Promo code Ripple, it will double your donation. So let's get that going. Do you know when that expires? No. Okay. I wish Stop. I did. All good. All good. Try it out. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll shame keep on you them. Updated. Yeah, shame <laughs> on them. But we'll keep you updated with that. Hey mom, it was wonderful to have you. I appreciate it. This was some fantastic content i loved every second of it i love you so much Aww. i wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the lady on the other end of this interview if you want 
to send me any suggestions for topics you want covered, or if you want to send me a suggestion for someone that you might know or if you think you'd be good for this podcast, go ahead, email me, teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that is teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you think. If you have time, give. go ahead on Apple Podcasts, on Google Play, on Stitcher, whichever one you're listening to us on. How about you give me a review and a rating if you would do that. It would mean the world for me, but only if it's nice. Because to be honest, me and my mom don't have time for your bull crap. Anyways, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you, mother. And we Thank will talk, you. well, I'll probably talk to you very soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.